We're going to take a moment here to talk about recursion. Recursion is simply the process of working with an object in a self-referential way. And maybe a common example might be the idea of a tree. A tree trunk maybe has an, an initial height of four feet. And you know what happens with tree trunks. Tree trunks branch out. They produce branches. So we'll have a couple of branches branching out, each with a length of three. And then branches, of course, branch. So we'll end up having maybe two branches coming out of each branch. And those each have a length of two. And then finally, finally we'll get a couple more branches branching out from those guys, each with a length of one. So we could consider the tree as a kind of recursive object, branches producing branches over and over and over. The same thing can happen in math if you think about a factorial. A factorial is simply a number multiplied by all the numbers below it, all the integers below it, all the way down to 1. And you indicate a factorial with an exclamation point. So 9 factorial is actually 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, all the way down to 1. Factorials are interesting. We can certainly calculate this on a calculator. We could plug those into a calculator and, and figure out what the answer was. But we can also define factorials recursively. We can think about a factorial in terms of recursion. And that's because 9 factorial is actually equal to 9 times 8 factorial. It's 9 times 8 times all those things. Well, 8 times all those things is 8 factorial. So we can think about 9 factorial is equal to 9 times 8 factorial. And of course, 8 factorial is just equal to 8 times all the things below it. That would be 7 factorial. So this is a recursive definition. We might even want to expand it a little bit and think about it in terms of variables. If we want to calculate n factorial, the factorial for any number, that's just equal to n times the factorial of the number 1 less than that. And how do you get the factorial of n minus 1? Well, that's going to be equal to n minus n minus 1 times n minus 2. So this idea of recursion, of a function calling itself and being used in its own definition, that's what recursion is all about. We might even write a computer program to calculate factorials for us. I'm going to write a very simple Python program here that will allow us to do that. I'm going to define a function called factorial. I'm going to give a number n. And if you don't know about computer programming, that's fine. This is a very short program. And to calculate the factorial of n, what I'm going to do is return n times the factorial of n minus 1. This is just what we've been doing up above with the math. And this is a computer version of that. We're going to send back an answer that is just n times the factorial of n minus 1. How will we calculate that? We'll calculate that by calling this function again and returning back to that function. Let's see what that looks like on the computer. So here we can see that I've written a program, just as we said on the paper, define factorial n. And when we run that program, we're going to return n times factorial of n minus 1. To actually run that program, I need to say print and then give it the name of the little function that I've written. So this, we hope, will print out the factorial of 9. Let's see what happens when I actually try to run that program. Uh, it looks like I ran into a little bit of a problem. It went kind of crazy there. Uh, and down at the very bottom, you can see there's a runtime error here. It says maximum recursion depth exceeded. So it, it is recursing, just like we wanted it to do. The problem is that we've gone too far. We haven't really given it any condition for quitting. So when we do a factorial program, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we allow for not continuing to calculate the factorial forever. And how do we know when we should stop? What's the last number that we want to be able to calculate before we stop? We want to go all the way down to 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little condition in here. I'm going to double check. I'm, I'm going to return this factorial calculation only if n is greater than or equal to 1. If it's not greater than or equal to 1, then I'm going to have to say, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to return 
1 is a value. So this will go all the way down to 1 and continue calculating factorials. Once I get done, I'm going to return 1, and that will be the end of the calculation. That will tell this factorial function that we need to stop. So let me go in and add that if statement. I'm going to say if n is greater than or equal to 1, then I'm going to return that n times factorial. Otherwise, I'm going to return 1. And maybe I'm even going to add one more little statement in here. I'm going to print out that I'm recursing to a certain depth. So each time when I go in, print recursing to depth n. And that will be a little indication of what's going on. Let's try running that program and see what happens. Oh, you can see it's going down all the way down to depth 1. And once it's finished, it's calculated that 362880. So it looks like it's calculating factorials very nicely. And it's doing so in a recursive fashion. Let me try and print the factorial of 90. That's going to have to go down 90 levels. So we'll see how that works for us goes down quite a ways and you can see there's an enormous number that gets printed out there at the end so that apparently is 90 factorial. So this is how we can use recursion to calculate factorials in a self-referential manner.